And the first award that we're going to present is our Grassroots Award. Uh, it is for a fabulous volunteer, both to the Wild Sheep Foundation and our many chapters and affiliates. And to recognize this year's recipient, I'd like to bring up Keel Johnson of, from Utah and Utah Wild Sheep Foundation. Keel? I'm really honored tonight to award the, or talk about the person receiving the Grass Roots Award tonight. That's Mr. Lee Howard uh, from Salt Lake City, Utah. I've known Lee for a number of years, being involved in wild sheep since the, what, 1979. And there's a few people that, that, that I've known that really did it for sheep. One of them was a man named Carl Mahon, who received the Conservation of the Year Award from the Wild Sheep Foundation when they were known as FNAWs about 25 years ago. He, he was responsible for the beginnings of our sheep program in Utah. Another person was a man named Jim Quarperwitz, who was also honored by this organization. He was a biologist for the state of Utah, and then the, the director of uh, wildlife for the state of Utah. Both of those gentlemen are, are deceased. And the third one that's, that I know personally is, is Lee Howard. Uh, is doing big things in Utah. Now there's other people that have done things, but these are the ones I know that have really did a lot. And Lee is, is dedicated pretty much his whole life to making wildlife happen, and especially the sheep. He's one of those people that just has an absolute love for sheep and cares about them. Um, Lee was responsible for a number of things, but the, the main thing was responsible for transplants in the state of Utah. And it, there were three types of transplants. The, the first was desert bighorn. We had desert bighorn in Utah, and Carl White Mahon was the one that told the Division of Wildlife that they had desert bighorn. They didn't know they had them, but, but he knew they had them, and he talked to them about them. But we didn't have a lot of desert bighorn, so we started the transplant program in the state and started doing some interstate trans, uh, within the state transplants and Lee got involved in, in those. But then we started transplants from other states. And, and Lee was the, the chairman of Utah FNAWS for, man, almost 20 years. And, and he made these transplants with other states happen. Uh, he was, always had his ear to the wall for, for transplants from other states that, uh, if, that another state had lined up, but they couldn't pull it off. They didn't have enough money or something happened. And Lee was standing right there because he always made sure that we had enough money to pay for those transplants. And so we started with Arizona, uh, moving sheep into the Virgin River area, which eventually went to the Zion unit, which are both very well-known units. Also bringing sheep out of Nevada and brought in a number of sheep out of Nevada and put in in different units that, that didn't have sheep in Utah. And so he's very instrumental in the, in the Desert Bighorn program. Then uh, we started with the Rocky Mountain program and he started with, uh, had a friend named Tom Powers who was the, the chairman of the Montana program and they started talking about bringing Montana sheep into Utah. They didn't quite know how to, how to do it because Montana was pretty tight fisted with their sheep and, uh, but they went to Governor Mike Levitt of Utah, who was a good friend of the Montana governor, and they had Mike Levitt, Utah's governor, go to Montana and meet with Montana's governor and pick up you, ewes that were being shot in, in Montana, that we can't be shooting ewes, we can use them in Utah. And so they started bringing these sheep out of Montana. We ended up getting hundreds of sheep out of Montana. Uh, in, in putting into the Rocky, in our, uh, our Rocky Mountain program. So Rockies they used to have in U Utah, but they'd all died from domestic sheep diseases pretty much. And so these were all new transplants, and we have a thriving herds of Rocky Mountain bighorn in Utah now, from Colorado, Wyoming, Montana. Uh, and and uh, another transplant they got was out of the Cataman Mines area in Alberta. And uh, that was an interesting one. Uh, it, it was a sheep transplant, one of those that came open. 
Uh, we had to go up and get the sheep really quick, and uh, they had to get them blood tested, so they took a plane up to Montana, took the blood samples, ran them back down to Boise, got the blood vessels checked, and met the, the horse trailers with the sheep in them at the Canadian border. About the time they got the sheep to the Canadian border, they met them the, uh, the certified blood samples that the sheep were okay, and they brought them on into Utah, and those sheep were uh, released on Mount Timpanogos and Mount Nebo, right on the Wasatch Front. Um, then the third group of sheep were the California bighorns that come out of the Kamloops area of British Columbia. And Lee, again, worked with the, the Canadian government and friends he had in the Canadian government at, to arrange those transplants and bring them in, and they transplanted them on Antelope Island in the middle of the Great Salt Lake. And they were very protected from predators there, and, and that herd ended up, as it populated, more transplant went on the Newfoundland Mountains, uh, to the Stansbury Mountains, to the Oak Creek Mountains, and established California bighorn herds there. And the thing that was really neat this year is Lee drew out on the California bighorn tag on the Newfoundland Mountains. And I was, I was with Lee and a number of other people here when he shot that ram. He shot it at, at, at uh, 690 yards, uh, not, actually 693 yards was the distance that he was able to, to shoot that ram. And it's good because the day before we went out to hunt, I called Lee up and he was going at the doctor's office and I heard him ask his wife, Carol, could you go in and get a wheelchair for me to go in, to take me in? His back was hurting so bad he couldn't walk. And then we were going sheep hunting the next day for a California bighorn. And, uh, but he ended up getting an 11 and a half year old ram, which was a tremendous ram for that, that unit. Um, um, one of the things that when he was working with other states, he said it was easier to ask for forgiveness than it was for permission. And so he, he, he did a lot of work with, with behind the scenes to make these transplants happen, and some of them were in place before anybody knew they were in place. The other thing he did, it was a great thing on the sheep program, was initiating the buyout program and working with domestic sheep uh, ranchers to buy out their, their sheep from operation of sheep to cattle. And so he come up with the money and go talk to the, the, the sheep rancher. And he said one thing that was really important to him, that when they walked away from those negotiations, that both felt that they won, that the win-win situation was extremely important to him. And if that didn't happen, he didn't want to do it that the, the rancher felt he was treated fairly and the state felt that they were treated fairly. Um, the other thing that he was involved with, he understood what our biggest challenge is right now, and that's re, uh, recruitment and retention of our youth. We're, we're dying from the bottom up if we're not careful. And so at the Utah chapter meetings, he would invite the youth to come, and they got in free, and they had youth raffles there so that there wasn't a, a youth that went away that didn't have some type of a prize in their hands. And, and these, are, these are some of the things that Lee's did over his life. And I'm, I'm really pleased to make this presentation that discuss Lee's history because he's a very close friend of mine. Very close friend. So anyway, come on up, Lee. Well, I apologize for him. I should have told you he was long-winded. But I would like to uh, say a few things, if that's okay. It all started out many years ago, and, and the board of directors had a meeting at every every uh, band, before every banquet, and they had they gave out monies. And I learned how to how to suck money out of the national convention. And I rode, I rode to the convention and sat down to Gary Vince, and he told me how to get money from the, the thing. So what he told me is, go in and talk to every one of the people which, that's a director and explain your program to them. 
And we did that. And the Wild Sheep Foundation in our early years gave us a lot of money. I mean, it wasn't, it, this wasn't us. It was a, a series of people. Uh, three years ago, I had uh, the guy from British Columbia come up to me out here. And he said, are you Lee Howard? And I says, yes. He says, you and I sent sheep to the Antelope Island. And, and I, I love to hear that. I mean, you know, uh, and we talk about putting sheep back on the mountain. Well, I've taken four sheep off the mountain here in Utah, and I've put back 500 sheep. So that's one of the things I did. I've also uh, worked with every chapter as donations and helping them out, guiding uh, the Idaho chapter, uh, Brad Morlock, and uh, the past president. <laughs> I'm just a little, uh, Bill Loudenbach in Idaho. Those two were, were instrumental in getting sheep from Idaho. Uh, I did have the opportunity to go to Kyrgyzstan. I was invited there by the Kyrgyz government uh, and European Union and Safari Club International to participate in a seminar. Well, I must have impressed them because they gave me two Marco Polo sheep tags to sell, and that was to, to uh, bring the, the numbers of Marco Polo up because the U.S. Fish and Wildlife said we've had the same numbers for the last 20 years, and so we need to have a survey. So I was, I was lucky enough to do the survey, and I used Jim Karpowitz as sheep plan, for that survey, all I had to do was plug in the numbers, and it was done, and I submitted to U.S. Fish and Life, and the next year they, they had another 30 sheep coming. But, you know, it's all about all the different people that's helped Utah chapter. It isn't me, it's my people that I've worked with, Hell's Canyon, uh, Wyoming, uh, Utah, Idaho, I mean, you know, I just have a fun time helping people. And, and that's what this is all about. And I, I appreciate the opportunity to thank you and the foundation and the chapters. That's been very important.